AWS reInvent 2024 in Las Vegas just happened. Here I want to present to you the highlights, that is summary of the keynote and also the new features that were announced. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. We're growing. We're almost at 100 subs. Look at these great videos. You can check it out if you like anything related to cloud or DevOps. With that, let's get on. And the first thing I want to talk about is Werner Fogel's keynote. Everybody always watches this. It's the number one thing you got to watch while you're there. And the thing that he mentioned this time, there's always a theme. And this time the theme was something that he called simplexity. This is like a new dictionary word that's been invented, I guess. But you can tell it's a combination of simple and complexity. And the idea behind it is things will get more complex, but you need to keep things simple to better handle that complexity. It sounds like a paradox, but it isn't. So let me explain it. It's all about preparing for increasing complexity. And another word that he made up, I think, I never heard of it before, is evolvability. And that is being better able to handle future changes, i.e. the increase in complexity. And the answer is to keep things simple. Use cloud-native design principles, such as loosely coupled services, well-defined APIs, event-driven architecture, lots of automation. That's obviously where DevOps comes in. And there was also a little bit as well about teams and team uh, uh, dynamics, which I thought was quite interesting, actually. It wasn't really so technical. It wasn't so much about the tools. One thing they mentioned was encourage questioning in the team. So never let a team say anything like, well, that's how we've always done it. That's definitely not what you want. You need people who are always questioning. Another one was all about ownership. We heard this before, right? You build it, you run it, you own it. And they broke it down, though, ownership being a combination of agency and actually that's wrong there it should be agency and urgency that's uh, that's actually wrong so uh, yeah that was an interesting take on it but have a look at the video yourself to see what they say this is just a summary there was throughout a hidden message to reduce complexity and to do that you can use AWS services to help do the undifferentiated heavy lifting using their managed services of course so there's always whenever there's a theme they've always got a solution for it right anyway on the whole I thought it was a pretty good keynote I thought it was quite interesting so let's get on to the the new features so well, the one that probably stole the most headlines is Aurora DSQL so if you don't remember Aurora is actually part of RDS but it was always like their leading product in the sense that it's it was the most managed uh, fully managed RDBMS so for relational uh, databases MySQL Postgres you always had Aurora which is like the leading more most managed product well now they got a new one called DSQL which stands for distributed SQL so if you got basic RDS and then Aurora for uh, MySQL Postgres, you've now got the next level DSQL, so it's even more managed, it's serverless, which Aurora I think was anyway, it's what they call unlimited scale, although of course there's always limits on the cloud, higher availability, so not just high, but higher, uh, zero infra management, that's AWS's words, not mine, and you cannot for single or multi-region, but I think what's implicit here is that you really are probably going to be using multi-region. That's where the D in distributed SQL comes from. And I understand it's some kind of like active, active uh, type of situation, multi-region. So that's super interesting. If you want to know more, check out this short URL I made, tinyurl.com slash Amazon DSQL. Now, another big announcement was S3 tables. So... This is bringing something called table buckets. It's a new type of bucket. There's already an uh, object, sort of general bucket. There's a directory bucket a lot of people don't know about. This is a third type of bucket called table buckets. And basically, the whole idea is, with S3 tables, there is now built-in support for tabular data. And this is a nod towards analytics workloads. So, for example, there's now support you can have in there Apache Iceberg, tables, so Apache Iceberg is a table format for, if you don't know, for Parquet, which is a file format. And what, what's the idea behind this? Well, previously you would have had to self-manage this. You would have had to build some other infra. Now it's natively supported in S3. So S3 is kind of becoming like sort of data lake style solution, which is uh, pretty interesting. It was always massive scale anyway, and it kind of makes sense that it's now becoming more like a you know, data lake. So if you want to know more, go visit that URL. And there was another S3 new feature announced, so that was qu queryable metadata. So I don't know if you're aware, but previously S3 did have a kind of limited metadata support. 
and this new feature now takes that to the next level and it's probably most accurate to call it a more richer automatic metadata generation there was something there but this is this is more this is better uh, and it stores it in and we uh, mentioned this earlier Apache iceberg tables previously this was not the case so now you can query it using a, a myriad of existing tools that could be used to access Apache iceberg tables the schema is like before there's a combination of both system and user metadata so the system is, is the automatic meta metadata the user metadata is your own and there's also in some integration with with bedrock and video files and stuff like that have a look for yourself you can read more about it here another big announcement was EKS so that's elastic uh, kubernetes service so it's Ku managed kubernetes on AWS EKS auto mode and they call this this is AWS's words offload your cluster operations now they do mention uh, not only compute but also storage and networking but everything I have seen so far it only relates to compute so it manages basically your worker node infra so previously in the past when you set up an EKS cluster you knew that your nodes were actually running on EC2 and you had to choose the type of nodes you wanted you had to provision them you had to scale them or at least set the parameters for scaling and you also had to patch them as well uh, when you have an EKS uh, version upgrade and the idea behind EKS auto mode is you don't have to do any of this anymore okay now I think this is kinda of getting more similar not the same exactly but you may have heard of GKE autopilot on uh, Google Cloud so uh, yeah this is quite interesting I don't really see how the networking or the storage comes into this but definitely the EC2 is sort of fully managed now so have a look you can read more at this URL and there's also some other announcements that came out at reInvent or just before. This is pretty normal for AWS. And these didn't steal the headlines so much. So I've summarized them into three different pages. We'll run through these really quick. So VPC uh, Lattice, which uh, I don't know if you know about this, but it's basically a service network offering. Uh, there's now some, uh, as I mentioned here, increased support, additional sort of support. So now includes TCP support and also support for ECS. Uh, CloudFront VPC Origins so this is a new feature and what it basically does is it makes it so that you can have CloudFront as a single front door to your EC2 or load balancer fronted application and previously you had to have like a public load balancer with its own IP address you no longer need this anymore with this new feature it handles all of that so that's really nice now there's also something new called RCPs which stands for resource control policies and what these are organizational policies you set across the entire of your organization all of the accounts and what they allow you to do is to set maximum permissions for any principle so for example you might want to block S3 access public access to all of your buckets and all of your accounts and uh, and that's that's something that you can do but it's really talking about the the principle here now it's similar to existing service control policies but they were focused on your resources whereas RCPs sorry RCPs are focused on your resources SCPs were were focused on uh, uh, principles or one or the other way around anyway have a look uh, it's been a while since I did SCPs so have a look at the uh, article yourself and uh, it's just looking at it from a different angle basically uh, organizational level. There's also for Amazon Aurora serverless there's now scaling to zero capacity. I think that's uh, pretty self-explanatory so that's probably useful for some people. And finally for DynamoDB global tables multi-region there is now in preview strong consistency and previously it was eventual consistency which you know if you know about cap theorem is kind of understandable because it's quite difficult to achieve strong consistency over multiple regions well somehow they uh, claim that they have achieved it so that's quite interesting check out that URL if you want to know more and also AWS private link now supports cross-region connectivity so previously when you use private link you could only do it on a region by region basis but you can now you can now specify cross-region connectivity so that is super useful I think so that's it that is the keynote and the new features hope you enjoyed this please check out the channel if you haven't already we're going for 100 subscribers we've got lots of really useful videos please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it share it and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more Thank you for watching and I will see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.